can just start about in time with Ankush for um, yeah, storage management in OpenShift. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, so the topic that we are going to talk about today is the management of storage in OpenShift. Uh, as we all know that management has been always a trivial task for the storage admins and the developers, whether it's deploying a cluster, whether it's doing a monitoring of a storage cluster, or uh, whether you are doing any of the day two operations, you have to go to the CLI, as we have all seen that there has been a number of presenters that have came and played with the CLI and then all the stuff. I'm not going to do that. I'm a UI developer working in storage, uh, working in the storage department in Red Hat as a senior software engineer. And I have been, okay, let me see. Okay, I have been working on a storage product from last over four years, uh, basically designing designing the storage from, and also implementing that storage and how user can easily interact to the storage systems. Initially, all started with uh, Gluster, uh, where we designed a console for a Gluster, then we transitioned to Ceph and designing a console for Ceph, and now the world has transitioned to uh, containers. So, so here I am designing a UI for the container storage in OpenShift. Uh, I also love playing uh, table tennis snooker in my free time and also uh, uh, like exploring places, food, food and cultures. Uh, so that's about me. I just want to ask a question, how many of you have faced the problem of setting up a storage cluster or doing a day two operations or doing the monitoring in the storage cluster? Please raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. So uh, we have been trying to address this problem and uh, I have some solution that I have implemented in the OpenShift and I'll be trying to demo it today. I have a few, few slides that, can, that I can take you to and show how, uh, how we have done that. Uh, the first part of it is how easily we can deploy a store, container storage on OpenShift. Uh, so there are, these are the few steps that I have done in the OpenShift cluster. So there is an operator in OpenShift the name as OpenShift uh, Container Storage. So in, that, in uh, that operator, what you need to do is you need to uh, you have the nodes. Uh, you need to select the storage node that you want to deploy on. Uh, you have the storage class. Why the storage class is required? So if you are on a, uh, let's suppose you are on a cloud, cloud environment like VMware or AWS, you will need the storage from those uh, cloud environments because you don't have the bare metal cluster with you. So OpenShift is designed for that. So that's where you need the storage class, class to be there. And the last one is the capacity that you want from the cluster storage. So let's suppose uh, you have the three nodes and you want, I, I have taken an example of two TIB I want to deploy on this one using this uh, GP2 because my cluster was AWS and AWS by default provides the GP2 storage class. So that's where uh, these three, three things are important. And, and then you can directly go ahead and click on create and it will start bringing up all the, so backend of the OCS is uh, backed by Ceph. So it will start bringing up all the Ceph storage uh, cluster and, and provide you the storage that you desired for. So that's, that's mainly about the installation. And moving on to the next part, yes, my cluster is deployed, now what? Now what we should do, uh, rather we want to monitor our cluster now and we have certain capacity like uh, we have two TIB, TIB of capacity and our capacity is full now. What you should do, how you should monitor that, you, either you need to on the CLI you need to run few commands, do a, a DF or, or those kind of a command on a system. But what I have done is I've created a uh, dashboard on a storage uh, where you can actually see how much of a, a capacity you can uh, you have been utilizing, how is the I/O performing, how, you, how are your uh, storage being used, and few of the things that are uh, related to the Kubernetes. This particularly is a Prometheus uh, architecture. Uh, we use Prometheus for storing our time series database though, so that we can take that data back and we can display it on a, uh, on a dashboard. So uh, if you see, if you see uh, this is a Prometheus server, what it does is it pulls the data from the uh, different services like FluentDB, a uh, few from the Kubernetes and all that, and it tries to show, uh, display the information on the Grafana. If you know Grafana, Grafana is a 
uh, chart graphing tool where you can see all your data very cool and and very in a very effective manner. So that's where it is trying to display. Um, on the other side, if you see, there is an alert manager. In the alert manager side, what it does is whatever uh, metrics that are there in the Prometheus, you push the uh, sorry, uh, you. Uh, you put alerts on based upon that. So let's suppose if your cluster, if you're, you have a safe cluster and your safe cluster is degraded, uh, I'll put an alert condition saying that if my safe cluster is degraded, please uh, send out a mail to a admin or a user, or you send out to a Slack or to a different web web hooks that you can configure to uh, Prometheus. So that's pretty much about uh, Prometheus. I'm not I'm not going to uh, go into a deep into that because. Uh, uh, it's not of a story related, not much of a story related stuff. But I have simplified that explanation on how we do that. So we have a we have a dashboards. We pull the data from Prometheus. If you see over here, and what Prometheus does is Prometheus pulls the data from the Ceph Manager pod that is there in the when you deploy the OCS cluster. Uh, this pod also gets deployed. This uh, this pod has all the exporters that are related to the Ceph. So it push, push, push the it pulls the Prometheus pulls the information from uh, Ceph Manager and stores it into in a time series database so that we can then pull the information in the dashboard and show it in a very effective manner. And this is the kind of dashboard that we have uh, created uh, where you can see all the information related to the time series and how much of a storage has been used, what, what is the inventory of your cluster, how many nodes, how many PVCs, PVs, and what are the events that are running in your Kubernetes cluster that are related to the storage. So th I'll be showing this in a demo and how we are doing it. There are, uh, if there are some alerts, you can see those alerts over here, but I'll be showing that in the demo. Uh, right now there are no alerts for this screenshot. And moving on to the next, uh, in the day two operations, we have implemented the expand of a cluster. So now you have monitored your cluster and your storage is almost full. How you can expand your cluster? So in, in a similar ma manner, how you install your cluster, you need to give the storage class uh, the, that is backed by your uh, infrastructure storage class. In this, uh, my infrastructure was AWS, so I choose GP2, that is default provision by the OpenShift. And you can say how, many co how much capacity you want to enter, so you said, Four, uh, four TIB of the raw capacity you want, and it will be having the three-way replication, so it will total provision capacity will be 12 TIB, and then you can go ahead and click on that, add, and it will take around one minute to add this capacity to the cluster, uh, add this capacity to the cluster, and it will be, uh, the cluster will be expanded. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll be taking you to the demo. I think that's most uh, crucial. Uh, Probably we can jump. Okay. Is everybody able to see it? Uh, is it good? Okay. Perfect. Uh, so uh, the cluster, the storage I talked about, the operator that I talked about. So my talk is basically uh, about the operators plus the UI combination working together so that it can give user a seamless experience. So the screen that first, first I showed you was uh, installation of a storage cluster. That is, you can click on this create instance in the OpenShift. And you can see those nodes over here. I have already cre created a cluster so that I can show, actually show you the monitoring over here. But you can click on these nodes, and you can select the storage class that you want to take the data from, and also the, the capacity uh, that you want to provision. Right now, we have provided some default option that you can choose from, but you can also enter your uh, capacity. And then you can click on Create. Uh, uh, the one caveat over here is uh, I have take, taken down one of the nodes so that I can show you uh, the alerts, uh, if the node is down, how the alerts will be popped up in the in that situation. So, uh, so I have taken down one of the nodes, and that's why it's not allowing me to create the cluster right now because def by default it, the replication is three, and you know you need three nodes to be there. But that's how you do it. If you have three nodes, you can select all from here, or you can select the particular one and click on create uh, after selecting these options. Uh, once your 
storage is created, it will create few of the pods. You can go to the workload and see all the pods that have been spun up over here. So these are all the pods. But I'll directly jump into the overview and the persistent storage dashboard that, that is mainly for the Ceph cluster that I've created. Uh, this is the screenshot that you saw. I think I can close this one. Yes, this will be better. Okay, this is the screenshot that I showed you up. So you can see that uh, all the details for the cluster are here. You can see the inventory over here. You can click on the node that you have selected for the storage uh, that is present over here. On the right, you can see the, the uh, status of the cluster that is degraded right now because I have brought down one of the nodes and, and it is showing me that the, that the cluster is in a warning state from last 10 minutes because this device is down because I have taken down that node and the, your data is not, also not resilient. So if you can see on the right, uh, data is right now rebuilding and uh, because there is uh, not much of the data that I have pushed to the cluster, uh, that's why it is not getting progress. But uh, once I take it down to the original uh, situation, it will be good. On the right, we have the activity card where you can see all the activities that are happening in your cluster related to the storage, whether the container is started, how your replica sets are, how your deployments are, and all that. Below that, we have the capacity breakdown card uh, where you can see how much of a storage is being used by each of your uh, namespaces or the projects, you can call it. Uh, you can also filter it by the storage classes. So you have uh, one storage class that is being used and that is using this much of a capacity and also by the pods, how much each of the pod is uh, taking in the, in the cluster. Uh, going down, as I told you, that you can monitor all the IOPS, latency, throughput, and the recovery of the cluster. Uh, so all the charts are here. You can also click on these and you can see how, how by each project or be, by each uh, story class it is behaving. And that's pretty much on the dashboard part. Uh, uh, there, there is one more thing that uh, there, there, on the right side there is a drop down that shows if you want to do a, a CCR utilization for one hour, six hour, or 24 hour, I'll click on this. 6R1, you can see that there has been transitioning. I, I, I have actually created a cluster, then I brought down a few nodes. There were some, some IOPS that came onto this uh, cluster, and then that's how uh, it was. So that, that's about it on the storage uh, dashboard part. Uh, another thing I want to show is how you can expand it, that, like how I showed you up. So what you can do is you can go to the storage cluster that you have created. On the right, you have a kebab menu. You can go over there and click on the add capacity. Add capacity will ask you the storage class and the raw capacity you want to provision. And you can click on this add, and it will start adding the, uh, it, go, it will go in the progressing state, and it will start adding the uh, PVCs for you. So you can actually come to uh, left menu, storage, Storage has all PV, PVCs, and storage classes. You can go to the PVCs, and you can see that there are PVCs that are already bound, and the new there will be few new PVCs that will be created. Uh, I think uh, that's OK. You can see it. There are new device set that has been created. Uh, and these are right now in a pending state. Once these are bound, uh, you can see that the reflected state in the, in the overview dashboard. and. Uh, and, and this capacity will be increased. It will take around two to three minutes to reflect that capacity in, the, in this charts, uh, but uh, that's how you expand your cluster. Too. So that's pretty much, I think, about it on, uh, on the management part of the OpenShift and how you can do it. Uh, is there any questions we have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, back, background, sir. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, on the background, it is Ceph, yes. Okay. Yeah. Suppose if you have some other storage, like uh, for example, my, my company is using uh, IBM Ceph at some scale. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is this. Uh, uh, okay. You have to do something to be able to use this. Okay. So the question is uh, can uh, any other storage provider can also use this UI to deploy the. Uh, deploy the storage cluster. Uh, right now, not uh, because you need to have a desired schema that is uh, requested by the uh, operator or the the UI that I've written right now. And if you do that, and if you enable few of the things, uh, that will be possible. 
in the later future. You, you need to do some programming like yes, that. exactly, exactly. So you need to define a YAML in a certain format so that it can pick it up and uh, you can do that. Yeah, that, that's about it. Yeah. Are you using Rook? Yes, internally it is using Rook. Okay. Okay. So, okay. The question, the question is, uh, uh, if I'm using the Rook inside, uh, can I use the different data sources that Rook has already has? And uh, uh, right now, yes, we can do that. But uh, this is the first time functionality that has come into. So we have implemented in Ceph. Yes, we can leverage it to the other uh, story operators. Uh, yes, we need to talk to a few of the folks how the schemas are needs to be designed and how we can push it. Yes. That's about it. Yeah. Is there any other questions we have? Yes. Um, so, um, how, how would be a use case if I have a, an OpenShift uh, cluster next to this? Uh, um, I create a storage cluster. Um, how, how, how would I manage? Uh, do I couple go? Uh, do I say here is what's providing my resources? So I don't. I have kind of a, a is this providing kind of an abstraction layer exactly. for multiple uh, cloud services and so on. And the second would be. Uh, Okay, uh, so the question uh, here is, the second question was, how, if there is a disaster recovery, and the first question is, uh, is there an abstraction layer on top of uh, the OpenShift there, you can do that. Yes, uh, this is abstraction layer on top of it, and where you can manage your cluster easily. And for a deploying operator, you need to write few YAMLs, and you, you need to uh, apply those YAMLs to the cluster, but this provides a pretty much a very much abstraction on top of it and where you can select those things but what it does internally is it adds those values to the yaml uh, which you eventually will do and uh, do that but it doesn't have any right now this disaster recovery is kind of a thing what we have right now is uh, i'm not sure uh, how to hide it up there's a recovery uh, thing that is here so if your cluster has gone down and uh, and it, it shows that uh, and if the, if you have bought down few of the new nodes and the pod has been start, started transitioning, it shows the graph saying that your data is being transitioned to another node, and this is the this is the rate with which it is being transferred. So that that's all we have right now. The up, upcoming things that we are planning to implement is kind of a snapshotting and cloning uh, of your PV and the PVCs that ha that is coming down in uh, Kubernetes 1.17. It is getting alpha, so. That's what we are trying to implement by now. Yeah. Also, there are some discussions around, like you know, providing a backup solution for the whole uh, OpenShift. Yes. Are you still in discussion? So probably it will take some time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions we have? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is only because uh, to to provide or to deploy a storage cluster inside the Kubernetes cluster or inside OpenShift, not to to attach any. Okay, sorry. Can you repeat it? Sorry, I missed so it. So you can only deploy a cluster inside the OpenShift. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, this is a management layer on top of the Kubernetes, so we needed a UI where we can add up a few things. So the question was, uh, is it just for the OpenShift, or is it for can be provided on the Kubernetes? Kubernetes, we cannot provide it right now because uh, we have the OpenShift as a management layer on written on top of uh, Kubernetes and where we can we have we had the UI available and we can add new things where it will be easy for the user to do most of the stuff that he's talking about or planning about. Oh, okay. So basically, the question here is, uh, can we attach a external cluster to this one? Yes. Uh, so this is something that is uh, planned, and we are working already working on it. Uh, you can de uh, deploy your external cluster and use that as a storage provider to this uh, OpenShift uh, to to your pods or the deployments. You can say yes. There are plans for it. Okay. Any other questions? Or are we done? 
I, I think that's what that's about it. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>